That night, I'd just climbed into bed, weary as a sack of potatoes, when there was a knock on our door, and there was Mrs. Hardy, the chief housekeeper, with a gentleman in ballet's uniform beside her, whose face I vaguely remembered from the servants' hall. Miss Romano, Mr. Finch needs your help, she said. Get dressed at once, smart as you can. We'll wait here for you. If she hadn't such a serious face on, I'd have thought it was a joke. But since it wasn't, I nearly fainted out of sheer terror. I shut the door and started trying to get dressed, and Nora didn't help by teasing me about going for a midnight rendezvous with my lover. When I was ready, Mrs. H. said, You're to get your sewing kit, then go with Mr. Finch and do exactly as he tells you. Remember to curtsy when you are introduced. You must not speak unless you are spoken to, nor look him directly in the eye, and you must do whatever you are told without saying anything at all, except if you have to ask Mr. Finch something. I nodded to show I'd understood, but I hadn't a clue who we was going to see. Surely not the king himself, and my heart was pounding so hard I was sure I'd not remember a thing. Mr. Finch strode off with me trotting to keep up down the stairs of the servant's wing to the sewing room to collect what Miss G calls her basket of necessaries. Then we was off again, up the stairs to the door which leads into the palace proper, and along those deep carpeted corridors and up more stairs, great wide ones with shiny brass handrails and massive paintings all over the walls, and then along another corridor with so many doors I lost count of them. No one else seems to be around, no footman or other servants, nor any other members of the family. All the while, Mr. Finch was talking to me. Urgent alterations are required, Miss Romano, to an item of clothing for his investiture, he said, and I tried to recall where I'd heard the word before to give me a clue about where we was headed. Mr. Finch was rabbiting on. The costume has been made for him by the royal costumers, but his royal highness is not happy with it. I have made a number of adjustments, but I have been unable to please him. Specifically, the breeches are too wide, and he would like them taken in. The fabric is so fine that it puckers with every stitch, so I hope that your small hands will be more successful than my own efforts. Are you listening, Miss Romano? As it slowly dawned on me where we was heading, I felt sure I would faint clear away before I got there. Yes, sir. I popped. I will do my best to please the prince. Not the prince, he snapped in a fearsome whisper. His royal highness, it should be, at all times, and you are not to address him directly, ever. Understood, Mr. Finch, I said, praying I would remember all the instructions flying my way. We are going to his private chambers, and afterward you are not to breathe a word to anyone about where we have been. Is that understood? Yes, sir. I managed to gasp again, just as we arrived. Mr. Finch smoothed down his hair and pulled his jacket straight, and I checked that my dress and apron were in order and my hair still neatly tied back. Then he opened the door.